If you want to know the best romantic comedies, you should definitely watch our picks for the best ones of the 2000s. Owen, call me Allegra. You're done. Come on. Uh, good job. We hope you will enjoy the following ranking. Please let us know your favorite in the comments and make sure to subscribe to never miss a good movie again. Number 10. Bridget Jones's Diary, 2001. I'm a bit hungover. Wish I could be lying with my head in the toilet like all normal people. <laughs> if you had a choice between Hugh Grant and Colin Firth, who would you choose? That's the question the role of Renee Zellweger tries to answer in the 2001 romantic comedy Bridget Jones's Diary. Directed by Sharon McGuire, the movie is based on Felding's 1996 novel of the same name, which is a reinterpretation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. The story follows Bridget Jones, an average, dissatisfied woman who fights against her age, weight, and lack of a man. Keep New Year's resolutions. <laughs> oh, and, uh... <laughs> Stop talking total nonsense to strangers. In fact, stop talking full stop. <laughs> yes, well, perhaps it's time to eat. Mm. Number 9. Fifty First Dates, 2004. I'm Lucy. Yes, I'm Henry Rod. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. It's pretty. Keep up the good work. Fifty First Dates is a 2004 romantic comedy film directed by Peter Segal and stars Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Rob Schneider, and Sean Austin. In this dark and cynical comedy, we follow veterinarian Henry Roth who, let's just say, enjoys the adult single life from day to day. But when meeting the woman of his dreams, Lucy, he completely falls for her. Things get complicated when he finds out that Lucy has no short-term memory, and he tries to win her heart again with every new day. If I wasn't telling the truth, how would I know this? That you're an art teacher, and you go to the Hookie Lao Cafe every Sunday, and you make Waffle Houses, and, and, and you like Casablanca lilies. Stalker! No, 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 don't you remember me a little? <laughs> Number 8. Serendipity, 2001. Serendipity. It's one of my favorite words. It is? Mm-hmm. Why? It's just such a nice sound for what it means, a fortunate accident. Serendipity is a romantic comedy film directed by Peter Chelsom and stars John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale. When love feels like magic, it's called destiny. When destiny has a sense of humor, it's called serendipity. Or at least that's how one would describe the fates of two young lovers who lost track in their 20s after spending a magical night together. But 10 years later and 3,000 miles between them, serendipity may call one last time. No, you do. Yeah. Fate's behind everything. I think so. Everything's predestined. We don't have any choice at all. No, I think we make our own decisions. I just think that fate sends us little signs and it's how we read the signs that determines whether we're happy or not. Little signals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Number seven. Knocked up, 2007. What? I'm pregnant. With? Emotion? With a baby. You're the father. Knocked Up is a romantic comedy film written and directed by Judd Apatow and stars Seth Rogen, Katherine Heigl, Paul Rudd, and Leslie Mann. Delivering the good old American Seth Rogen comedy fans might expect, Knocked Up proves to be different because of its poignant and refreshing look at child rearing and the absurdity that may come along with it. When two unlikely partners are forced to stay together because of pregnancy, rising journalist Allison wants her new partner, Ben, to prove that he can provide for the kid without help. And then you said, just do it already. I didn't mean do it without a condom. I meant do it, like hurry up, like get going. Well, I assumed you're wearing a patch or like a dental dam or one of those butterfly clips or something like that. Dam? It's like saran wrap. It's disgusting, okay? But I thought you had one. Number six. The Holiday, 2006. We uh, switch houses for two weeks for the holiday. She's in LA at my house and I'm here. The Holiday is a 2006 romantic comedy film written and directed by Nancy Myers and stars Cameron Diaz, Kate Winslet, Jude Law, and Jack Black. When two women who are disappointed by life and the relationships they get from it exchange their houses for a refreshing holiday trip, they must face massive cultural shocks as they each encounter completely new cities. But what both couldn't have expected is to fall in love there. But when the exchange ends, both have to make life-changing decisions. I can't believe that you have had sex with the woman staying in my house! <gasps> he told you that? Oh my 
God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I thought I was talking to Graham. Could you just hold, please? I'm terribly sorry. Number five. The 40-year-old virgin, 2005. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo, answer this question. Are you a virgin? <laughs> Are you a virgin? The 40-Year-Old Virgin is a sex comedy film directed by Judd Apatow and stars Steve Carell, Katherine Keener, Paul Rudd, Romani Malko, Seth Rogen, and Elizabeth Banks. Following the simple premise that its brilliant title already promises, The 40-Year-Old Virgin follows Andy, an amiable single guy working at a big box store. Unlucky with love and women in general, his friends push him into losing his virginity. But when he meets local shop owner Trish, he might get a chance to form a serious relationship with her. Oh, Mika, you should burn in hell! Okay, all right, no, seriously, I think I'm done. Ooh, I think we're done. I think that's good. Ooh, you know what, guys? This is not a good look for me! Number four. Definitely, maybe, 2008. $4 you pay $4.25 for a pack of cigarettes. They don't put as many chemicals in them. So those are healthy cigarettes. Definitely Maybe is a 2008 romantic love puzzle by Adam Brooks, with Ryan Reynolds, Isla Fisher, Rachel Weisz, and Abigail Breslin. Set in New York City during the 1990s, the film is about Will Hayes, who tries to help his 11-year-old daughter understand his impending divorce by telling her the story of his past romantic relationships and how he ended up marrying her mother. Setting off a hearty comedy about the romantic entanglements with three women, Will realizes that he may still have a chance at a happy ending. Why, why are you so concerned with all of this anyway? Because I want you to be happy. You know, I'm happy. Number three. Forgetting Sarah Marshall, 2008. You're getting complaints about a woman crying hysterically? Yeah, you know what, I hear her too, and it sounds like she's having such a hard time. Forgetting Sarah Marshall is a 2008 romantic comedy film directed by Nicholas Stroller and starring Jason Segal, Kristen Bell, Mila Kunis, and Russell Brand. The story follows Peter, who is a music composer for a TV show that features his girlfriend Sarah in the lead role. After a long relationship, Sarah abruptly breaks up with Peter. In order to deal with his breakup, he chooses to go on a vacation to Hawaii, unaware that Sarah is traveling to the same resort with her new boyfriend in tow. Hawaii is a place to escape for people who can't deal with the real world. Yeah, you know, there's so few personal shoppers and pet therapists. Gosh, it's such a hard life. Mm. Number two. Love Actually, 2003. If you believe in Father Christmas, children, like your Uncle Billy does, buy my festering turd of a record. Set one month before the eve of Christmas, Love Actually follows the lives of eight different couples and their unique takes on love and romance. The movie portrays the emotions of love, jealousy, hatred, and romance beautifully. It stars Hugh Grant, Liam Neeson, and Keira Knightley in lead roles. Released in 2003, the movie is directed by Richard Curtis, who manages to capture the difficulties and hardships of various relationships elegantly and pack it all into a perfect Christmas atmosphere. A relationship based on the president taking exactly what he wants and casually ignoring all those things that really matter to um, Britain. Before we unveil movie number one, here are a few honorable mentions. I mean, you're sending all the right signals. No earrings, heels under two inches, your hair is pulled back, you're wearing reading glasses with no book, drinking a great goose martini, which means you had a hell of a week and a beer just wouldn't do it. And if that wasn't clear enough, there's always the fuck off that you have stamped <laughs> on your forehead. I think there's something that you should know. Uh, we're, uh, we're getting married. We are getting married. <laughs> who, is, who is getting married? You and I. You and who? I are getting married. Yes. We are. Getting married. We are getting married. Yes. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? Ain't nobody want to grab all you. White boys love me. White boy. I said white boy. Yeah. You'd fuck me, wouldn't you? Should I say yes? Should I say yes? Yeah. Number one. 500 Days of Summer, 2009. Okay, um, here's something that
that you wrote last week. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, fuck you, whore. Though it was a directorial debut for Mark Webb, the film was an immediate blockbuster. The romantic comedy drama, with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel in the lead roles, has us rooting for them against all odds. The story follows Tom as he meets Summer and falls in love with her, only for her to feel nothing at all. Unlike traditional love stories, it isn't boy meets girl and happily ever after. It celebrates love as a feeling above everything. Darling, I don't know how to tell you this, but there's a Chinese family in our bathroom. Do you agree with our list? Please let us know in the comments. If you want to know more about a particular movie in this list, you can check out our links in the video description. And for more top 10 movie videos, be sure to subscribe to Community TV.